Pictorial evident, unprecedented crimes perpetrated by the Nazis at the Buchenwald concentration camp. That 1,000 boys under 14 years of age are included among the 20,000 still alive at the camp. And that the recent death rate was about 200 a day. In the annals of history, there exists a figure whose deeds are so hauntingly sinister that they continue to grip our collective consciousness long after their time has passed. Among these infamous characters of the past stands Ilse Koch, a female Nazi guard whose chilling legacy earned her the ominous moniker the Witch of Buchenwald. Are you wondering what kind of woman could willingly embrace malevolence and brutality on such a scale? How did she come to wield such power in one of the most heinous chapters of human history? So stick till the end to uncover these horrors. Our tale begins with a seemingly ordinary girl, polite, hardworking, and happy. Her life could have been filled with ordinary events and regular challenges, just like any of her peers in Germany. But destiny, it seems, had a different plan for her. As the sands of time slipped away, a dangerous ideology began to pull Ilsa in. The deceptive allure of the Nazi party, with its intoxicating blend of nationalistic fervor and racial superiority, began to cast its spell over her. The world around her seemed to be echoing the promises of Adolf Hitler's policies, drawing her deeper into its dangerous web. In 1932, she took a step that would irrevocably alter her life's trajectory. She became a full-fledged member of the Nazi party. Her heart, mind, and soul were now captivated by the chilling beliefs of the party. Hitler's hypnotic speeches and the Nazi party's propaganda machine had successfully twisted her perception of reality. However, her true tale took a sinister turn when she crossed paths with her future husband, Karl Otto. Once an ordinary commander's wife, she started stealing money from prisoners, but that was just the beginning. As her true colors emerged, a devilish side took over, and she committed a series of unimaginable crimes. She had this strange obsession with tattoos. She would ride around the camp searching for prisoners with tattoos, and then send them to their death. But before that, she would carve out their tattooed skin and keep it as some kind of sick trophy. It's unbelievable, but she even collected things like lampshades, book covers, gloves, and handbags made from human skin. It's just horrifying to think about. Despite having her own children, she showed no mercy to pregnant women, beating them brutally with a whip containing razor pieces. Her wickedness didn't stop there. She organized orgies with SS men and their wives and even forced male prisoners to rape female prisoners in front of her. Ilsa Koch's behavior was so terrible that it's difficult to believe anyone could do such things. She would walk around half-naked, making prisoners look at her, and those who did were shot by the guards. It's just awful to think about the suffering she caused at Buchenwald. Karl Otto Koch's actions at Buchenwald first caught the attention of SS Obergruppenführer Josias Waldeck in 1941. After investigation, the Kochs finally got arrested in August of 1943. They were charged with embezzlement, stealing huge amounts of money and valuables from prisoners to make themselves filthy rich, and murdering prisoners to silence them. Ilse Koch was imprisoned until 1944. She was found not guilty due to insufficient evidence, but her husband got a death sentence from an SS court in Munich and was executed by firing squad on 5th April 1945, one week before American Allied troops arrived to liberate the camp. After her husband's execution, Ilse Koch moved in with her remaining family in Ludwigsburg. United States officials arrested her there on 30th June 1945. Now, I bet you're curious about the fate of this cruel lady. Well, let's uncover that too. But before we continue, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss a single word. In 1947, Koch and 30 other Nazis faced an American military court at Dachau. She was accused of aiding and participating in murders at Buchenwald. This meant she was part of a plan to kill people there. During the trial, Koch revealed she was eight months pregnant, which was true. 
She was already known for having relationships with several men, including the chief medical doctor and the deputy commandant at Buchenwald. There were even rumors about her involvement with SS officials and prisoners at the concentration camp. The court was surprised because Koch was 41 years old and isolated in prison, interacting mostly with Jewish American questioners. Ultimately, on August 19, 1947, Koch received a life sentence in prison for violating the laws and customs of war. However, in 1948, General Lucius D. Clay, who was temporarily in charge of the American zone in Germany, reduced Koch's life sentence to just four years in prison. He claimed there wasn't enough solid evidence linking her to murder or making items from human skin. As you can imagine, people were furious about this lenient sentence and she was rearrested in 1949. Her trial in a West German court lasted seven weeks, with a staggering 250 witnesses taking the stand, including 50 who supported Koch. The drama escalated when Koch collapsed in court and had to be carried out on two occasions. The prosecution claimed that they had witnesses who saw Koch select tattooed prisoners for killing or even make lampshades out of human skin, but eventually they dropped this charge as they couldn't prove it. In January 1951, the verdict came in and Koch was found guilty of incitement to murder, attempted murder, and causing severe harm to others. She was handed a life sentence and her civil rights were permanently revoked. Koch didn't give up without a fight. She appealed the decision, but the Federal Court of Justice of Germany denied her appeal in April 1952. She even sought a pardon multiple times and cried for help to the United Nations Commission on Human Rights, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. Koch appealed the court's decision, but the appeal was denied on 22 April 1952 by the Federal Court of Justice of Germany. Koch later tried several times to get a pardon. However, the Bavarian Ministry of Justice refused all of her requests. Koch also protested her life sentence to the United Nations Commission on Human Rights, but got no help from them. Ilsa Koch, known for her association with a concentration camp, had four children in her life. As her son Artvin grew older, the intense hatred towards the Koch family overwhelmed him with guilt and shame, leading him to tragically take his own life. Another son, Uwe Kohler, whom she had to give away, spent his life in foster homes without the love of a real family. When he attempted to establish a relationship with his mother in prison, she became his last hope for redemption. However, realizing her manipulative intentions, she succumbed to despair and ended her life by hanging herself with bedsheets in her jail cell. The burden of her actions and the painful repercussions on her family came to a tragic and devastating end. So, there you have it, the chilling tale of Ilsa Koch, the infamous Witch of Buchenwald. It's hard to fathom the depths of cruelty she embraced during those dark times in history. What are your thoughts about her and the atrocities she committed? Feel free to share your views in the comments section below. If you found this video informative and thought-provoking, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.